Hello, my name is Claire, and welcome back to Green Living Podcast. This week, I wanted to talk about animals and how they relate to products we find in stores. So I'm going to be focusing on animal testing and products from animals. This subject is something that I have known about and most of you have probably heard about. However, I did not know a lot about animal testing, the specifics, and I wanted to learn more. This isn't a light topic, so if at any time you need to pause this episode and come back to it, that is completely fine. So about six years ago, I decided to buy makeup cruelty-free, and I have been able to purchase all of my makeup cruelty-free, and my goal is anything new coming into my life will be cruelty-free. Now, there are a lot of different things, not just makeup, that are tested on animals that I will talk about a little later in the podcast. So, in this episode, I will talk about the basics of animal testing, alternatives to animal testing, a few examples of animal testing and abuse, and how to avoid animal tested products. So what is animal testing? The term animal testing refers to procedures performed on living animals for purposes of research into basic biology and diseases, and it is to assess the effectiveness of medicines and testing human health and or environmental safety for the consumer and industry products such as cosmetics, food additives, household cleaners, pharmaceuticals, and industrial agrochemicals. All procedures, even those classified as mild, have potential to cause animals physical as well as psychological distress and suffering, and often these procedures can cause a great deal of anxiety for these animals. Most are killed at the end of the experiment, but some may be reused in subsequent experiments. And I wanted to note that something being labeled vegan doesn't mean that it is cruelty-free. Cruelty-free originated in the 1950s and is defined as not tested on animals. Cruelty-free relates to animal experimentation and whether or not a product and its ingredients have been animal tested. Vegan status relates to whether or not animal ingredients or derivatives are used. So just because something says that it's vegan does not mean that it is cruelty free. So that is something to look out for when purchasing products. So I wanted to talk about a few common animal procedures that are done for animal testing. The first is forced chemical exposure and toxicity testing, which can include oral force feeding, forced inhalation, skin, or injection into the abdomen muscle. The next is exposure to drugs, chemicals, or infectious diseases at levels that cause illness, pain, distress, and sometimes death. The next is genetic manipulation. An example is an addition or knocking out of one or more genes. Next is ear notching and tail clipping for identification. The next is short periods of physical restraint for observation or examination. The next is food and water deprivation. Next, surgical procedures followed by recovery. The next is infliction of wounds, burns, and other injuries to study healing. The next is infliction of pain to study its physiology and treatment. The next is behavioral experiments designed to cause distress. And an example of this could be electric shock or forced swimming. The next is manipulations to create, quote, animal models of human diseases ranging from cancer to stroke to depression. The next is killing by carbon dioxide asphyxiation neck breaking, decapitation, or other means. The next is exposing animals to radiation. Next is surgically removing animals' organs or tissues to deliberately cause damage. The next is forcing animals to inhale toxic gases. And the last on this list is subjecting animals to frightening situations to create anxiety and depression. 
Now, this is just a short list of common procedures that are performed on animals for animal tested products. And those are very disturbing things that they do to animals to be able to test them for our consumption and or use. So next I want to talk about the types of animals that are used for animal testing. There are many different species used around the world. The most common include mice, fish, rats, rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, an assortment of farm animals, birds, cats, dogs, mini pigs, and non-human primates such as monkeys, and in some countries they use chimpanzees. So what is wrong with animal testing? If the ethical part doesn't sway you to want to stop animal testing, potentially the scientific research behind it will. So for nearly a century, drug and chemical safety assessments have been based on laboratory testing involving rodents, rabbits, dogs, and other animals. Aside from the ethical issues they pose, animal tests are time and resource intensive, restrictive in the number of substances that can be tested, and provide little understanding of how chemicals behave in the body. And in many cases, they do not correctly predict real-world human reactions. Similarly, health scientists are increasingly questioning the relevance of research to aim at these animal models and human diseases in the laboratory by artificially creating symptoms in other animal species. So they are trying to mirror human diseases or toxicity by artificially creating symptoms in mice, dogs, or monkeys. And this has major scientific limitations that cannot be overcome. Very often, the symptoms and responses to potential treatments seen in other species are dissimilar to those of human patients. And as a consequence, 9 out of every 10 candidate medicines that appear safe and effective in animal studies fail when given to humans. Drug failures in research that never delivers because of irrelevant animal models not only delay medical progress, but also waste resources, and they risk the health and safety of volunteers in those clinical trials. What is most concerning thing to me is that governments require a certain amount of tests done on animals before a product can be approved, and so if a country requires a certain amount of animals be tested with a certain drug, then no company can go around those rules because that is the government mandated rule and I think that needs to be what is changed first is that governments need to not make those make a requirement out of testing on animals. So is animal testing needed for medical progress? Independent scientific reviews demonstrate that research using animals correlates very poorly to real human patients in fact, the data shows that animal studies fail to predict real human outcomes in 50 to 99.7 percent of cases. This is mainly because other species seldom suffer from these same diseases naturally as they are found in humans. While on a superficial level, they may share similar symptoms, fundamental differences in genetics, physiology and biochemistry can result in wildly different reactions in both the illness and potential treatments. For some areas of disease research, over-reliance on animal models may well have delayed medical progress rather than advanced it. By contrast, many non-animal replacement methods such as cell-based studies, silicone chip biosensors, can provide faster and more human-relevant answers to medical and chemical safety questions that animal experiments cannot match. And an example of an alternative to animal testing, instead of measuring how long it takes a chemical to burn the cornea of a rabbit's eye, manufacturers can now drop that chemical into cornea-like 3D tissue structures produced from human cells. And likewise, human skin cultures can be grown and purchased for skin irritation testing. A few examples of animal abuse going on right now for products that we might find in the store. So the first case is all about alpacas and their coats and PETA did an undercover investigation about alpaca wool and how alpaca wool shearers were abusing the alpacas. So they were thrown onto a table and their legs 
were strapped to rope and pulled in different directions. And some were pulled, some legs were pulled out of their sockets. And in many cases, um, they put uh, pregnant alpacas on these tables as well. And the alpacas are prey animals, so they started to get anxiety and stress out under these constraints. And some of them started to vomit. And the shearers did not do a, a good job, and they left the alpacas skin bleeding in certain areas. After the alpacas were sheared, some were put on the ground and the shearers stood on their necks and others were bleeding from their mouths from forced trauma caused by the shearers. I will link that case on my blog as well. It's a very interesting read. And the company that sources this wool is one of the biggest in Peru and they provide wool to large companies such as Anthropology. So starting at Anthropology and trying to make sure that they aren't purchasing from this company will help. So the next case study was a coffee cat poop. So this was PETA as well. They did an undercover investigation. And if you don't know what coffee cat poop, it is where a civet Asian cat eats a coffee bean and then poops it out and then they use that as to roast and then use for coffee. So the civet cat is at these companies that make this coffee. They are kept in cages indoors and they are a nocturnal animal, but the conditions are made so that they are under lights during the day and so they aren't able to get enough sleep and their cages were covered in feces and some cats under stress started to chew at their tails, leaving their tails bloody and some of them did get infected. And there was no evidence at this facility that suggested that these animals were getting any sort of medical attention. And at these facilities, they did show a couple of cats to tourists to make them appear that they were being treated correctly. But then behind closed doors, they had rows and rows of tiny cages with these civet cats living in them. So these companies are able to say that their coffee beans come from wild cats because they do collect a small percentage of these beans from wild cats, but they have almost 90% of the rest of the beans come from these caged cats. And I will have that investigation linked on my blog as well. So where can we look out for animal tested products and our products with animal parts in them? So one of the biggest ones is makeup. Makeup is tested on animals for skin irritation and on their eyes to see if it will irritate their eyes. And my big motivator for purchasing cruelty-free makeup is when I was purchasing from MAC Cosmetics, I learned that they started to distribute or they had been distributing to China and China has regulations that you have to test on animals before you're able to sell a product in China. And so I decided to no longer buy any MAC Cosmetics until they no longer sell to China. And so I decided to stop purchasing MAC Cosmetics because my values did not align with that company's values anymore. So that was my big motivator for buying cruelty free makeup is because I realized that these companies, even if they aren't testing for the American market on animals, they could be testing because they're selling to different markets. So the next item that might have been tested on animals are household products. A good rule of thumb is to think if anything comes into contact with us, such as contact with our skin, something that we could inhale, or something that is our in our household that might emit any sort of chemicals or anything like that, it has no doubt probably been tested on animals. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb is if you come into contact, whether it's touch or breathing it in or anything like that, it has been tested on animals. So as I said, household products are, almost all of them are tested on animals unless it says otherwise. The next is food items are sometimes tested on animals and this can be seen in some insecticides. There was a study that I read where mice were being force-fed blueberries that had come into contact with a certain insecticide that they were testing out, and so they were force-fed them, and if they died, then they decided to not use that insecticide, and if they lived, they still did more tests, but then they usually decapitated or killed the mice afterwards. So the next item is paint. Paint actually has a lot of animal 
parts and byproducts in them. And they are also tested on animals. So an example of this could be forced ingestion of the paint and skin tests to test the irritation of the paint. There are animal parts being used in the paint. Some of it is gelatin, which gelatin are hooves and bones of animals that is cooked down to make the gelatin. And there are also some other animal products or animal parts that are in paint. And I will link an article that describes what other parts are in the paint as well. So how to avoid products that are tested on animals or might have products with animal parts in them. So if you find a small bunny emblem, that means that it is cruelty-free and or they might just say cruelty-free on it. And you might find a bunny emblem with a cross through it, which means that that has not been tested on an animal. And products with animal parts, just make sure that you do your research with them. As I said, paint is an example, but there are many other examples of products with animal parts actually in them. So if you want something that you know has not been tested on animals and does not have any sort of animal parts or byproducts in it, then you will have to make sure that it is officially approved that it is cruelty free and that it is vegan. So I hope this information was helpful for everyone. I thought during my research it was very interesting what I was finding. It is a harder subject as I said before. It's not easy to read about these case studies and I found many more case studies that I did not include in this podcast. But a lot of these things that people are doing for animal testing are deplorable and not okay in my opinion. If you do feel like taking action is something that you want to do, there are a lot of organizations that do take donations and or you can volunteer for a lot of organizations fighting against animal cruelty. And I think, again, just making sure that you are an informed consumer and a conscious consumer because there are so many things that we might not think about. And the paint for me, when I was researching for this podcast, I had no idea that there were animal byproducts in the paint. And so I think it's very eye-opening that so many things around us do have either animal byproducts in them or are tested on animals. And I really wanted to do this podcast because I think we just need to be more humane to our fellow animals and to each other on this earth. And I can be found on social media such as Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at Green Living Pod. That is at G R E E N L I V I N G P O D. And I have a blog coming soon, which I am currently working on. So when that is launched, I will be notifying people on social medias and I will also be notifying people through this podcast when that is launched and I will have a lot of information that I might not have shared during the podcast on there and I will have all of the links that I mentioned in a podcast on that blog as well. Thank you so much for listening.